Hi, this is Vince from Burns Stainless. After a hard day at work today in the fabrication shop, it's finally quiet and I wanted to take a few moments to record a video of some exhaust topics. This is going to be the first of a series of videos that we're going to do that we're going to be known as Vince in Shorts. And although it's a little bit cold now and not, I'm not wearing shorts in the summertime, believe me, I will be wearing shorts. Not that you necessarily want to see that. So today, I'd like to talk about exhaust flanges. Um, behind me here, I have a SB2 header uh, from a uh, Winston Cup team. This is probably about a 10, 12 year old uh, set of headers here that I want to use in, um, as my first example for today. Um, also, it might be a good time for me to, know that, to let you know that I want to hear your comments, I want to hear your questions, and I want to be able to talk about some things that you really want to talk about, not everything that I want to talk about. So, um, again, SB2 um, header, this is actually a tri-Y header or a 4 into 2 into 1. And the reason it's called as a tri-Y is because we have three Ys in the system, 1, 2, 3. Um, it's a header that actually can uh, broaden the power band of an exhaust of an engine um, tremendously. And in the case of a, a restricted motor, they actually do uh, very well um, in terms of being able to scavenge the exhaust better. But we're not here to talk about header theory, we're here to talk about flanges. Uh, this is just a very um, high-end example of an exhaust header. These are uh, mild steel flanges, actually, on this stainless steel header. Um, back in, you know, 15 years ago or so, this was very common practice uh, for a couple of reasons. One is a mild steel was much less expensive than stainless, much easier to machine. Um, number two, mild steel doesn't warp um, as easily as stainless steel does. If the welder gets a little bit uh, as anxious and cranks the heat up too much, you can actually warp a uh, stainless flange, which is very difficult to uh, straighten back out to avoid leaks in the exhaust. Um, you know, our preference is, of course, to use a stainless steel, and current technology in CUP is, of course, to use Inconel. But uh, again, mild steel, I wouldn't be embarrassed to use mild steel, although if I was to do it, I'd do mine out of 304 stainless. Uh, a couple things to note on these flanges. One, they have quite a bit of lightning done to them. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of CNC machining here in order to take the weight um, out of the flange. In order to, again, um, too much weight costs time in racing, so uh, we want to minimize that as much as possible. The other thing I want, a couple of things I want to note here is um, the shape of the flange. Uh, this. The SB2 uh, head has a square oval port. So the flanges have actually been made to match that shape, while the header builders had to go in here now and shape the tube to that port, taking some time. And is really why building headers the right way um, is expensive, because it's, it is time consuming. Um, want to mention here also that we like to weld um, our, our headers from this side of the flange. We like to get a full weld over here, uh, this has actually been uh, uh, surfaced on a grinding wheel uh, following uh, welding just to give it a nice flat surface. Um, on the back side of the header, or the, sorry, the flange, uh, there's a lot, lots of different things that you're going to see out there. In some cases, you're going to see people who are going to fully weld from that side. Uh, you might see people that rub a stitch weld. Um, here are some people that don't weld at all. We actually like to use silicon bronze in a lot of our applications for a couple of reasons. One, silicon bronze is a soft material and it actually acts as a damping um, for the vibration that's in the header and it's, that, that la helps us uh, get long-lasting headers. Uh, number two, it's a low temperature brazing process so um, it's less likely that you're going to get full penetration on uh, the uh, weld and get a stress riser on the back. The, this interface is a little bit important because you have a very stiff, uh, thick flange on this side and a very thin tube here. And there's a lot of stress that occurs right in this region. And if you penetrate too far, cause a stress riser, you're going to magnify the forces there uh, leading to cracking. So that's one reason we, one of the other reasons we like to use the silicon bronze. Third, it's just a, it's a nice material. It's a nice gold uh, uh, look. Um, it's a nice way to finish off the flange. Um, again, form follows function. We don't do it for looks, but it's sure nice that when you have something that's uh, nicely done, that it looks good when, you, when you're done. Obviously, this header was never run. It's all it's in its pristine shape. 
It was actually built for a show, not exactly to uh, the customer's uh, specifications, because at the time this was really a uh, proprietary uh, project, but it's something that we used at shows uh, to show off our, our wares. Next thing I'd like to do is talk about just the uh, t various types of flanges that are available out there. This is probably what I would call, maybe not the bottom of the line, but close to the bottom of the line, but it's inexpensive. It's a mild steel flange. You can tell by the rust. This has been around the shop for uh, quite a few years. Um, it's, uh, this one was probably plasma cut or laser cut. A lot of ones today you'll see might be water jet cut. Um, again, acceptable. Uh, relatively heavy flange. They haven't done a lot in terms of lightening to this uh, flange. That's a 3 8 inch thick material. A uh, couple things to note about uh, these processes is that one, you're not going to get uh, straight walls. All these are going to be tapered because of the process. So all these holes are, are tapered. So you have to be very careful when you specify the dimensions to your uh, cutter that um, if you're going to have these custom cut that he gets those dimensions correct so that when you go in there and insert your tubes inside, uh, they, they, it works well. Um, again, nothing much else to say. Uh, acceptable, cost effective, something that uh, for a home project, you know, really would be not a bad thing to use. This is for my Mazda um, four cylinder engine, by the way. The next header. Uh, flange that I'd like to talk about is a CNC flange. This is the kind of flange that when we put together kits for our customers, this is the flange type that we would use. Uh, CNC out of 304 stainless steel. Um, it's important that when you do get a flange that it is 304 stainless. If you go to your machinist and ask for a flange made out of stainless, um, he might very well want to pick 303 because 303 is a very um, easy stainless steel to be machined. Um, but it is not a good welding alloy. So when you go to put your headers together and try to weld it, you're going to have problems. So make sure that you specify 304 stainless. And because it's so hard to machine is one of the reasons why they are as expensive as they are. A um, couple of things to note about this, just you have very uh, good dimensionally correct, correct bolt holes. All your walls are going to be uh, parallel. This wall is parallel through here. None of the taper like I showed you on the other ones. Uh, the finish on the edges is very, very nice, uh, what you would expect from a billet machined piece. Um, this is again what we would use here, and we uh, like these very much. Nice chamfer, very good finish. Uh, wouldn't this is really the, the right way to do it? Now, if you go into production, however, then, then, then you have some other options. Uh, this is a header that's made by one of our customers, FabSpeed. Uh, they, FabSpeed builds headers and exhausts for various uh, exotics, including Porsches. This is from a Porsche 911, a 991 GT3 engine uh, to be specific. Um, they've actually gone to the trouble of making a uh, casting for their, um, for their systems. Again, when you're in production, you can, you can make these uh, uh, investments and, uh, and recoup that investment. Uh, some of the things to note here, again, like we saw in the other flange, the flange has been shaped to the port. It's an oval port on this 911 engine. On this side of the flange, it's actually round. It's actually been a, it's countersunk here in order for the header builder to put his uh, uh, tube right up to that. Minimize a lot of labor hours because he does not have to shape the, uh, the tube um, into, into the port. Um, he's, they've done a really nice job of transitioning from the port to the round in, in the flange. Um, they've done a good job of lightening up the, the, the uh, exhaust and, and again, you can do a lot of these things when you have the, uh, the ability and the luxury of doing some investment casting. So again, uh, good job fab speed on this, very nice. Finally, what's coming in vogue today is actually 3D printing. Um, this is actually a, a CNC billet uh, flange that we made for a customer down in Australia. Uh, I think it was for a Yates head. Um, nice flange, like we were talking about before. This one has a square oval port um, that we're showing here, but they've actually transitioned within the flange to a round uh, flange on this side. Countersunk again, header builder just puts his uh, tube in there, welds it up, and he's done. 
that's when you have big budget racing you can do that this is interesting this is actually a 3d printed um, flange this one was done with a laser sintering process and from a CAD model to a part in a day um, it's pretty amazing technology there are actually a couple different technologies here like I said this was a laser sintered uh, process the other one is a process called Metal X by Mark Forged, which is actually a powder metallurgy process where they actually print, much like a plastic printer would do, and then the, pro the part is taken and put in a sintering oven, which bakes off uh, a binder that they use in the process and consolidates the material, giving you actually the uh, almost a complete strength of 304 stainless steel. Uh, but what's also very interesting is they're able to put uh, honeycomb uh, on the inside of the uh, part. So you, not only do you have a, a dimensionally good strong part, it's also lighter because parts of it inside is hollow. And that's a technology that's uh, come to the market here in the past year, a very, very good one. And if anybody's interested in getting some flanges done uh, through that process or even this laser sintering process, we'd be very happy to help you with that. So that's the end of the talk for today. Um, I hope that it was enlightening for you. Again, please give me your questions and your comments, and we may discuss some other things with you later on. So, till next time, bye-bye.